When you think of an airplane, you often associate it with its wing. The wing is a reflection of the mission the aircraft is designed for. Wing designs are as varied as the aircraft they're fitted onto. Some are long and thin, like the high aspect ratio wing common to sailplanes like this one. Moving from wings optimized for slow flight to ones optimized for speed, you end up with a swept wing like the one on this MiG. Delta wing forms like this Concorde has are generally known for their stable flight characteristics. Some designs incorporate winglets on the tips to reduce the drag associated with wake turbulence. Some experimental designs produce bizarre looking creatures like this Grumman X-29. Even more unusual is the oblique wing design on this AD-1 built for NASA research. And sometimes, like with this B-2 bomber, the wing is the entire plane. So what can we say about the design of the van's RV-12 wing? Why did the designers choose the shape and size they did? Let's look in detail at this wing compared to designs chosen for other planes in a similar class. I believe most, if not all, of my viewers are pilots, and everyone is well familiar with the terminology in this chart. You can't really discuss wing design without mentioning span, cord, camber, aspect ratio, and wing area. The performance of a wing is determined by how these characteristics are combined. So I apologize for the poor quality of this chart. You just can't be picky when you steal a chart from the internet. This shows a cross section of a wing at one point along the cord. The airfoil section of the Wright Brothers plane is rudimentary, but it worked. The airfoil profile of the RV-12 more closely resembles the shape adopted for the P-51 with a convex shape for the top and bottom for better streamlining. The airfoil design used for the RV-12 is the NACA 23014.1 according to Vans. Now they may have tweaked it a bit, but the basic shape is the same one used by planes as varied as the Taylor Craft, the DC-3, many of the Beechcraft, and even the Cessna Citation. Looking from above, the RV-12 wing incorporates a constant cord for the full span-wise length. This leads to a wing plan form referred to as a Hershey bar design. There is more than one advantage to this design approach. From the perspective of the kit builder, this simplifies the construction since every internal rib is the same. With a tapered wing like the Piper Warrior has, ribs toward the wing tip have different dimensions than those at the wing root. Tapered wings might have a cosmetic appeal, but from an aerodynamic perspective, there are trade-offs to consider. Wing loading is a factor of gross weight divided by wing area. High wing loads typically mean higher stall speeds. On a plane like the RV-12 where certification as a light sport aircraft requires a low stall speed, you want a low wing loading number. The RV-12 has a wing loading of 10.4 pounds per square foot. Compare that to the Cessna 172S at 14.7 pounds per square foot. When you taper a wing, you reduce the wing area and the wing loading goes up. To maintain the same wing area, if you taper, then you have to increase the span. When you increase the span, you add weight. So the Hershey bar plan form makes more sense for the RV-12. Still another design consideration of a wing is its stall characteristics. With a constant cord wing design, the wing tends to stall at the same time across the whole span of the wing while a tapered design tends to stall first at the wing tips and progress inward toward the root. For this reason, some wings are twisted at the tip to produce a lower angle of attack at low speeds. This is done to maintain aileron authority throughout the stall. Sometimes you'll see stall strips on wing leading edges to induce a stall closer to the wing root for the same reason. The simple design of the RV-12 wing doesn't require any of this. At the same time, the RV-12 wing design does not suffer in performance compared to tapered wings. It's also worth noting that the RV-12 ailerons or flaperons run the full length of the wingspan, so you get good lateral control throughout the whole duration of a stall. Have you looked at your wingtips lately? My Piper Cherokee had this big fat wingtip like a lot of 1960s era airplanes did. Turns out that's not the best design. Instead, a sharp edge tip like the Horner tip works best for airplanes in the RV-12 class. You'll find this type of tip in most light planes now. This tip was specifically designed to minimize the effects of wingtip vortices on the lift, drag stability, and control of the plane. 
It turns out that this design can increase range by 1 to 2 percent, increase the rate of climb, increase cruising speed, reduce takeoff distance, and lower the stall speed, especially in ground effect. So, for those R12 drivers like me that float halfway down the runway if you come in hot, well, you can thank your Horner wingtips for that. Can you talk about wings without mentioning dihedral? Eh, it's pretty much aerodynamics 101. I've looked everywhere to find out the angle used by the RB12. The best I could find was an opinion posted in the Vans Air Force blog where one builder had calculated it at about 3.5 degrees. Now, I'll go with that. Now, what's the angle of incidence for an RV-12? Well, just like the dihedral, I haven't found an authoritative answer. Maybe if you've built one, you can add a comment below to let the rest of us know. Well, that's about all I know about the wing. I like my wings, and even though they're detachable, I take them with me when I fly. If you have ideas to add to this, please comment below. I always enjoy the discussion. You're welcome to subscribe to the channel and follow along as we add still more episodes in the coming months. Hope to see you then.